Hi everybody and welcome to Travelling with Russell and welcome to a new video. Today we're in the suburbs of Moscow and I'm here with my friend Ben. And, ben, and Ben's, where are you from Ben? New Zealand. And today as you can see from the title and the thumbnail, we're going to go check out Globus, my local supermarket. And Ben hasn't been to it before. No. So First time. We're going to go and have a look around and we're going to kind of compare a little bit between New Zealand supermarkets and Russian supermarkets. So, are you ready? Let's go. Okay. All right, so we're going to walk around with Ben here. Now, Ben hasn't been to this supermarket before, so the first thing, Ben, is they've got a Globus Cafe here. Now, in New Zealand, have you got anything like this? No, this is a full, what they call a Stolovia or a cafe uh, here with so many options. Um, New Zealand, the nice, the nice supermarkets, you might be able to get a coffee and a muffin with your shop, but certainly not a full sit down cafeteria with uh, burgers and salads and Asian style food, noodles. Now, just as a bit of a point of reference, everybody, we're here at lunchtime on a Tuesday. Yep. So it is a working day. So obviously everybody in Russia is working today, or well, everyone should be, but it's still reasonably busy. This has the pancake station here, but they're not doing pancakes. This would be their uh, pancakes with the toppings right there. Sour cream and minced liver and mince. Oh, you know Delicious. more than I do. Yeah, so this place, actually I really enjoy coming here. Now, Ben hasn't been here at all before. He's actually never been to this supermarket before, but we were just uh, looking here at the different soups. Have a look at the choices there, that's all the breads. Some of these buns here have um, uh, cabbage and beef mince in them. Oh. So for 40 rubles you can pick up a, a little bun with some meat. That's incredible, really. So yeah, plenty of choices. But now these trolleys look a little bit familiar. Now Ben doesn't, uh, hasn't been to an Ikea before. So I was explaining that these look like the Ikea trolleys, so I wonder if they stole the idea or borrowed the idea. What do you think? Um, there seems to be a lot of borrowed ideas in Russia, but otherwise you just carry your tray around and there we go. They've even got breakfast. Drink the, options. Yeah. Juices, coffee. Uh-huh. Breakfast cereals, fruit salad and ice cream and Look at that, yogurt on top. Oh, look at that, uh, chocolate banana sauce. Yep. Oh. All right, so we're gonna go on into the supermarket and so what do you think so far? Uh, pretty impressive that you can um, come for a shop at the supermarket and grab a full meal for only a few dollars before or after you're finished. Yep, very cool. All right, everybody, so I'm gonna kind of get Ben's reaction to this a little bit, so. Ben, anytime you want to jump in. This is something that I am not used to. So beer in a bottle is very common First in of Russia. All, corona. Mm-hmm. Um, but what we can do here is these are full boxes, six packs, but you can pull a bottle out and just buy a single bottle. For 109 rubles, which is rubles. about two dollars give or yep. take. So yeah. So I'm not used to this. If there was a box of beer on the supermarket shelf in New Zealand, you'd be buying the whole six pack. You certainly wouldn't be pulling out a single bottle and buying a single bottle. But what I'm learning is in Russia, you can buy anything, any way you want. All right, Ben, so we're walking into the uh, uh, fruit and veg section. Now, seasonally, of course, there's a lot of differences in Russia. So the one thing that's currently in season is watermelons. So, have you seen this many varieties before? Nope. So yeah, there's quite a few different varieties here. And these are big watermelons too, by the way. They're not small. Yeah, these are, these, are, these are monsters. Yeah. I've, never seen, I've never seen this, this type before. This pale green one. So yeah. The so, just over a dollar for a watermelon that size. Yeah, dollar per kilo. Ah, oh, per kilo. Yeah. yeah, so we're probably looking at about six, eight kilos. Yep. So yeah, pretty reasonably priced, I think. Now, Ben, of course, we we're in the fruit and veg section. This is very much like New Zealand, I think. Uh, yep. Seasonal fruit and vegetables. 
Now at the moment, a lot of fruits because it's summertime in Russia. So you can still get anything you like here. You're gonna pay a little bit higher price. Now lunchtime on a Tuesday, there's still a lot of people here. What do you think? Yeah, certainly is busy. For a Tuesday lunchtime. This is, this is located close to a busy bus stop and metro station, correct? Right, that's the whole thing with this area where we are here. So yeah, there's a lot of foot traffic coming in. Um, yeah, it's gas station uh, energy drink, adrenaline. <laughs> so yeah, the, all the greens. Yeah, literally everything and more of what I'm used to seeing. <laughs> Chilies. Baby, baby sweet corn, yeah. asparagus. Ooh. Yeah, so there is uh, definitely fluctuating prices here, depending on the season. So whether or not it's either grown in Russia or former CIS, or well, some CIS countries, will vary the price a whole lot. Now, we're gonna walk off here. I've Over just here. seen what he's pointing to, so let's head on down there and check yep. it out. Now, Ben, you were pointing to it just before, so... Now, you're just like these kids right here who have got a chance to see the fish up close. So, anything like this in New Zealand, uh, Ben? Certainly not in the supermarkets. <laughs> uh, not sure how much fresher you can get than this. <laughs> Select your fish and it shall be filleted. <laughs> I think we're uh, always excited to see this, the kids as well. I was explaining to Ben, he's got a couple of uh, children himself. And I said, if you ever bring them to the supermarket, it's a good they way have, to They have their own aquarium. Yes. There's more over there too. Oh, check that out. Yeah, look at that, right back there. Now, we've come across the uh, butcher section here. This is an area dear to my heart. <laughs> and there's even tasting over there. You can taste some sausages. Get a stick and taste a bit of sausage. Yeah, so... Look at this selection of smoked hams right here. Just this, this section here. Yeah. Pork ribs, smoked pork ribs. Oh, uh-huh. So all the ladies are tucking into the little samples over here. Yeah. And the one difference as well, I think, especially with Australia and probably New Zealand, is everything is packaged in store here. So you'll see at the back here, all of the uh, butchers working away, packaging everything up. And they're even uh, cooking and doing the uh, boiling back there of the sausage. That is similar to uh, New Zealand oh. New World, which is one of the big brands of supermarket. Actually have the biggest butchery school oh. in New Zealand as well. Oh. So they do all their in-house butchery. But you've got a lot of lamb, yeah. a lot of beef. A lot more lamb than what is on display here. Uh -huh. uh, and the cuts are definitely different, I've noticed here. The cuts of meat are different to what we would buy in New Zealand. Um, so yeah, there's definitely differences. A lot more pork is eaten here than what we eat, um, which I think is actually quite similar to a lot of Europe. They eat a lot more pork than we do. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, the range is enormous here. So I brought Ben over to the uh, frozen section here, or one of the small frozen sections, and you can see all of the different types of uh, frozen fish here. This is a trout, farrell. Redfish. So do they have anything like this in New Zealand? I don't think for Australia we do, especially where it's kind of help yourself like this. No, nothing like this. Certainly oh, yeah. not. Find this, uh, some people actually, I've, I put this in one of my other videos and some people say it's not very hygienic, right? Where you can just put your hand in the freezer and grab out what you want, but. There's think... enough salt on these things to uh, sterilize anything. Right. Trust me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've walked on a little bit further here and we're kind of getting towards the different uh, ham, salami, Preserved meats. Yes, I call them, I call them cured meats or yep. processed meats. Yep. So huge selection of salamis here, by the way. Uh, like really a big selection. It kind of goes the whole way down. Really, I would say no shortage. <laughs> yeah, so one thing that uh, we wanted to kind of portray in this video a little bit as well is just showing, oh, is that Asmati? Mm -hmm. uh, is showing how full the supermarket is. Uh, no matter what day of the week we come in, 
I mean, it's not as busy as it normally is. And I did explain this uh, as well, that we weren't expecting to see a full place. But what do you think by the selection of all the uh, salamis? And Can I just point out this? Mm -hmm. I've seen this before when I've been in Russia in the past, but green cheese and red cheese. Oh. Two things that I hadn't seen before I, had, before I came to Russia. Oh. There you go. You can have green cheese with your crackers. Now, just looking at the cheeses here, uh, Ben, what was the one thing you just noticed on the uh, signage on the cheese? Um, so, on the majority of the cheeses here, we have a flag for the country of origin of where that cheese was produced. Uh-huh. Now, so do we know the first one? Switzerland. Oh. Now... Russia. Pretty much all Russia right here. Iran. Oh, Iran. Iranian yep. cheese. Now, if anyone's watched my Iran car video, yes. you'll know that obviously Russia and Iran do trade with each other. So, do you know any more countries? This is a bit of geography here. Uruguay. Uruguay. Oh, nice. Big selection of cheese. Italy. Oh, it's oh that's, that's, that's the olives. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Italian olives. That figures. Now, as we keep walking around here with Ben now, Ben hasn't seen, apart from the outside of the shopping the supermarket when we first did the beginning part, he hasn't seen any of this. So the reason you'll see him kind of looking like he's got eyes in the back of his head is he's just seeing things for the first time. Now, in all the while that you've been in Russia, Ben, you haven't uh, been to bigger supermarkets like this. So no. have a look at the bread here. So obviously this is all baked in-house as well. So yes. The uh, one difference with Australia, and I pointed this out before, is we don't have the bakehouses in the supermarkets anymore. They're slowly removing them because of labour costs. In Australia, we'd have to pay for the, uh, for the staff to be full-fledged bakers. I'd suggest it's probably the cost of the land as well, where the supermarkets are located. They could have the bakery somewhere a lot cheaper. I think one of the... Uh, one of the uh, ovens is ready. <laughs> Check out the, uh, the uh, pastries here. Oh, this is making me hungry just looking. Now, Ben, as you're looking around the different breads here, what was the one thing you just mentioned to me? Yeah, so this is an example here of a dark rye bread. This you can't buy in New Zealand, really. You can buy rye bread, but it's kind of, it's not proper rye bread so the weight of this is like a brick and you only need a couple of small slices um, so that's one thing that I really enjoy here so I will basically have some of this every day uh, and savour it until I leave. So we've been wandering around for probably 25 minutes um, and I just wanted to point out that we are only halfway across the length of the store and we've only been following the outside perimeter, so we've really probably covered 10% of the supermarket so far. Fair enough. Thanks for that. I, <laughs> so, uh, I, this is my local supermarket, so I probably didn't think about that until uh, we just pointed out just now. This is probably five or six of my local supermarkets. In New Zealand? Yes. Wow. All right, I think I found another favorite aisle of Ben's here. This is where all the spirits and alcohols are. So there is also wine off to the left over here. But what do you think of the selection of just the uh, spirits so far? So one thing that I think is notably different in New Zealand, in Australia, we don't have alcohol in supermarkets. No, no. We have bottle stores or liquor stores, which is where you would buy your spirits. Um, you can buy beer and wine uh, in the supermarket, but certainly nothing stronger than either of those two. Very different here in Russia. All right, so have you found anything that you're not used to here on the shelf? Other than all the shelves of spirits in the supermarket? <laughs> um, this one in particular caught my eye. So here we have absinthe black, 70% um, alcohol. Uh, this is a, is it one liter? Uh, 700. 700 mil. And that is about $32, $33 American. Um, but the whole point of this is, is the high alcohol percentage yeah. in a supermarket. 
Yes. Not in a traditional liquor store. In a supermarket. Now, absent, depending on the country, it's illegal because it's a hallucinogenic yes. drug. Yes. Is correct. that right? So correct. it depends on where you... You can buy uh, it in New Zealand, but even at select bottle stores. So it's not everywhere and it's not common. So to see quite a few bottles of that here is um, shocking. <laughs> <laughs> now, I don't think we could make a video in a supermarket in Russia and not talk about Coca-Cola because of all the sanctions and all the companies that have pulled out. Over a thousand companies have pulled out of Russia. And I think the ones that seem to get the most press and news is Coca-Cola, right? Correct, yeah. So have you seen, <laughs> now you've seen this store for the first time, and now are you noticing Coca-Cola? Now the only two that I've noticed is the vanilla one and this orange one, which I don't think is very popular at all, but look at all the other ones. What's these other brands that we're seeing here? Jumbo Cola. Jumbo. Vini Vidi VC. Jumbo Cola. Cool Cola. Cool Cola. Can we keep going? Bella Cola. <laughs> Bella Cola. Bella means white. White it? Cola. Yeah. Doesn't That's make strange. sense. And then Chernogolovka has got its Cola brand as well, which is a very established brand. And the one down here too. Funky Monkey Cola. <laughs> and one more over here. This uh, in-house cola here. Big bottle for 64 rubles, dollar a bottle. And there's even PV Cola here, which is, I'm not sure what the PV is the initials for, but it looks like the RC Cola from America. The uh, interesting, the brand of it right there. Interesting colors right there. Yeah, I wonder. Oh, Russian colors, yeah, the Russian flag. That's interesting. So what do you think of all these different colors? I think um, clearly there's uh, opportunity for businesses here in Russia and uh, making the most of it. As these items are slowly disappearing, disappearing yeah. the shelf is filling up from this side with other alternatives. So, um, yeah. So what do you think of all of the different sodas then? There's uh, plenty of choices. And we've just noticed something as well. What did you just notice there on one of the brands? This Ever... This Everest. Everest. Which is what I've been noticing popping up everywhere in cafes and drink fridges around the city. Um, and actually Burger King, it seemed like Burger King had these on their yeah, drink dispenser machine. Right. And um, down here we have pepsico.com. Ah, so I wonder... Pepsi's left Russia, right? I mean, I wonder if they're rebranding some of their products to uh, continue on in the market. What do you think? It certainly seems that way. Cool, so this is um, a drink that um, I really enjoy while I'm here in Russia because once again, we don't have this in New Zealand. But this is a berry called Sea Buckthorn, um, really popular here in, for juices and also for infusions with um, alcohol like vodka. And yeah, as you can see, it's, there's all these solids at the bottom. So it's, it's real juice made from real berries. And um, yeah, just wanted to point this out. This is something we can't get and um, it's delicious. Now I just noticed behind you there. Now just go down another, another few uh, shelves. Now have a look at all these with the fruit in. Are these? This is feed jar by the looks. Yeah, this so. is feed jar. And then I think. Feed hoya. Uh-huh. And then what's the other one there? I think that one is, looks like, uh, is it a peach or an apricot? It's either a peach, yeah, or an apricot. Ne nectarine, what are we calling? We, we don't know yeah. our fruits. We've suddenly forgot all the name of our fruits. Oh, it looks like all three of those. And plums. Uh, yeah, with so these would be what you'd call a compost, where you've still got the fruit. You've basically boiled the fruit in the water and added some sugar, and that's as opposed to a juice, it's called a, a compote. All right, so we've come down to this uh, uh, kind of area of the supermarket here where it's got this big expansive section. And in Australia, we call this the flex area of the supermarket. So about once a month, they change this. Now, we've just passed 1st of September, which obviously is now coming out of summertime. But now the reason for this is... Well, in Russia, 1st of September, 1st of the month, is a big cleaning day, so uh, everyone will be getting prepared not only for the start of the school year, but also for 
um, what we would call a spring clean. So here they've got fully stocked with all of your items that you would need to um, fully clean up your apartment after the summer. Now we're just walking towards the uh, checkout here and uh, slowly walking around the whole store at least once. Now what did you just notice here uh, that's not very uh, normal? Here we have lawnmowers and edge trimmers and chainsaws. Um, so these all look like they're electric or battery powered. Um, but I just made the comment to Russell that not many people have lawns around here with the style of apartment living that occurs. So I, I am a little bit surprised that they have um, quite a few lawnmowers <laughs> and, and uh, landscaping tools for sale in the supermarket. Now, I'm not sure how much they would transact. So yeah, so very typically in Russia, they have standalone hardware stores. So they've got OB and Leroy Merlin. They're the main two that we uh, would commonly go to. But come to a supermarket uh, to buy your lawnmower. Drills and jigsaws, chainsaws from a supermarket. Yeah. Engine oil. Everything you need. Yeah, even the, uh, the jerry can there. Yeah. Look at that. Bit of everything. Now, uh, Ben's come across another thing that's a little bit different in Russian supermarkets. Yep. And that is... <laughs> winter tires. Car tires. Now, how did you notice that there were winter ones? I wonder if you want to just point out this. These little steel studs built into the tread of the tire. Um, once again, not very common in New Zealand, only in certain parts of the country where we get se serious snow would you use these. Um, but obviously here, everyone uses them, everyone changes their tyres uh, every year. So, yeah, I was just a little bit surprised to see um, a, a small range of winter tyres for sale. And it looks like they're roughly about 60, maybe 60 US dollars for a tyre. Um, and considering they're winter tyres, to me that sounds like a bargain. So as we're walking around a little bit further here, just thought I'd ask uh, what your expectations were coming in. I guess you kind of knew it was a supermarket, right? But what do you think about it now after walking around and um, seeing? Well, I had a bit of an idea of the scale just from seeing the shop front. But after walking through here, it's, um, yeah, it's just very, very impressive how, how large it is and how even though it is so large, every single shelf is stocked with items. Um, and considering that it is a weekday, this place really is busy. I mean, look at this confectionery section. Is these are just single wrapped? Yeah, yeah pay by weight, and pay lollies. by weight candy. Yeah, this um, is very popular in Russia as well, where you'd uh, get yourself a, a bag of your favourite. Sweets or candy? What do yeah. you call them? Lollies in New Zealand. Lollies, yep. Yep, same in Australia. And you pay by weight and then put a sticker on it. And it's all self-governed, so you don't have anybody doing this for you. So it's all up to you to choose the number that you chose. This lady's busy filling them up here. And uh, having a couple of young kids, this section is uh, critical for us. So as you can see, if you, uh, I think we walk down here, um, all the baby shampoos, baby soaps, wipes, nappies, um, not under lock and key, easily accessible. Um, yeah, there really is everything and more here. I would say it's more than a supermarket, it's more like a everything you need for your home here. All in the one place. Baby foods here, so there's organic options and traditional options. Um, one thing I have noticed since we've been here is we have had to work a little bit harder to find baby food. Um, say for example, pouches and bits and pieces that don't have added sugar. So that's one thing that I would say here is they do seem to put sugar in a lot of um, the baby foods, which in New Zealand is kind of a no-no. Um, but as I said, there's options. so. Um, everything here for, for what we need, which is great. So as we're walking around a little bit here now, uh, Ben and I have come out on our own today. Now, his wife's here in Russia with us, and he's got two kids. Now, 
What do you think here, your wife? She's going to be a little bit jealous that we came here? A little bit jealous <laughs> and probably watch it and say, hey, why didn't you buy this, this and this while you were there? Because we needed it. Um, but me being a man, I have absolutely no idea what we need. <laughs> we don't have... <laughs> I'm the same as well. If I, it's not my department. And if I buy the wrong thing, my wife will correct me. You know, yep. you didn't buy the right size, the right colour, the right flavour, so... Yep, that's well, correct. I end up going home with only a couple of things that I wanted and that's about it. Russian woman, eh? <laughs> so we've just come down to the kind of canned section here with all the different uh, vegetables mostly, olives, uh, pickled vegetables. Now, roughly, I don't know... Ben, how's your Russian language and reading the labels? You've said it done very well not, so not far. Not too bad, not too bad. So you kind of, kind of, you're going to be able to buy things easily here and not feel like you're buying the wrong thing. Yeah. But uh, this is something that, uh, yeah, what what I say in Russia is uh, if 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 they can grow it, they'll bottle it. And so <laughs> they've got everything here: tomatoes, mushrooms, gherkins. Um, this whole row is all just bottled product, so um, they love to preserve. And I think it's just part of the Russian tradition is they grow things in the summer and they preserve it so they can eat it through the winter because nothing grows in winter. So um, the taste for preserved food like this is what they love and there's heaps of it, lots of options. Now, what do you think, Ben? This dairy section here, they've got the cow right up the top. Actually, that's kind of handy. The cow's got his own uh, lanyard on as well, so he's obviously an employee of the store. I wonder if you can buy him. Oh, I, I don't take him <laughs> home and bottle your own milk. So, plenty of choices as we walk around here, the uh, dairy section. Yeah, they have a lot more different fermented type dairy here. Uh, like drinking yogurts and, and milk type products that are, are fermented. So um, stuff like kefir and I think another one's called rajinka, something like that. Um, so they kind of, to me, taste a little bit like off milk, but apparently they're good for your, uh, for your gut health. Now, Ben, you've been watching a few different videos on YouTube over the months. Now, the one thing that you did just mention to me was in one of the videos, the butter was in anti-theft containers, right? Correct. Now, we've come over to the butter section here. And actually, it's a very big butter section. It's You've probably got about 10 meters of just <laughs> different, different types of butter. Different choices of butters. Different percentages of fat yeah, content, I assume. Fat content salted changes. Salted and unsalted. Uh-huh. What about with the guy on here as well? Ooh. Someone from the Caucasus or something mm. like that? Yeah. But the one thing that is very noticeable is none of them have any kind of anti-theft packaging on. No. See, no matter what the value is of them, which we did notice that on videos a few months ago. So whether things have kind of changed in the last few months. But yeah, potentially suppliers have opened up more and there's right, more yeah. well stocked. Yeah, so and actually all the ladies are shopping here. It seems to be everywhere we've walked today. We kind of keep catching the the crowds at the aisles that we want to look at. So one thing I've noticed here is, uh, in this supermarket, is the area dedicated to frozen produce is incredibly small in comparison to the size of the shop. So we have uh, this section over here, which is pretty much, well, majority of it is ice cream. Here we have dumplings, palminis down here. Um, and then this section here is really the frozen meat, like the processed meat, nuggets, uh, burger patties, pizza. Um, but yeah, very small in comparison to the size of the supermarket. Not a lot of wedges and, and fries, which is what a lot of it Considering would be Considering how many in, potatoes in are in Russia, right? Yeah, I mean, that's right. Uh... Um, and then frozen veg is a very, very, very small section because you can get it all fresh. Because you can get it all fresh. And cheaper, essentially. Yes. Um, whereas in New Zealand, frozen veg is, uh, you know, it's used in a lot of cooking of dishes. And I think they just have a different, obviously a different way of cooking here. And they don't use a lot of frozen vegetables in their cooking. So yeah, just interesting to note. 
So as we walk the last couple of aisles here and we kind of come to the checkout now, we've actually both got ourselves a drink and we're going to try this Everest. So I've got the orange one and you've got the... Bitter lemon. Bitter lemon one. So we're going to give it a try and see if Pepsi has maybe come uh, into a little bit of luck here. I guess you can... Would you call it luck or just the change of brand and the Pepsi brand is disappearing, but you can see how many aisles there is to cover if we did the whole supermarket in a video, so... And the checkout numbers... Yeah. The checkout numbers go to 81. So 81 checkouts. 81. Wow. That's a lot of checkouts. And even for like a mid-week, uh, you're going to, I would say probably, well, actually now looking at all the uh, normal checkouts, I reckon probably all of them are open, are they? Or oh, three quarters of them, them are open, yeah. Yep. Wow, so. So you don't have to stand in line for 20 minutes to get your... Uh your right, groceries to pay out. for things, yeah, yeah, that's the efficiency of these kind of places, right? I mean, I yeah. think that kind of boils down a little bit to the European influence as well. The fact that this is uh, German uh, run and operated, they're obviously using a lot of different standards to uh, some other supermarkets, I guess, but plenty of aisles uh, to uh, shop here. Uh, looking even right down, we can barely see the uh, end of the store. Okay, everybody, so we've come outside of Globus Supermarket. We're just about to catch a bus to go on our next adventure together. Yep. What did you think overall of Globus Supermarket? Very impressive, yep. It's a really cool supermarket. Um, I don't think you could go in there and be disappointed with anything, actually. <laughs> yeah, I mean, uh, okay, we noticed that there was a few prices that were increased yeah, a little bit yep, over the months. Sure. But overall, though, I mean... I think everywhere in the world prices have gone up, right? Absolutely. I mean, yep. So we can't Absolutely. really, you know, compare that exactly, but uh, yeah, we're going to catch a bus to our next adventure. Thanks for watching Travelling with Russell. If you like Ben in the videos, give us a thumbs up, post a comment, let me know what you think. If you want to see Ben in more videos, let us know also. I'm sure we're going to get lots of comments from Ben's family. <laughs> yeah. He's going to send it to everybody in New Zealand. Yep. And we're going to go viral in New Zealand. Make it explode. <laughs> so, yeah, thumbs up, write a comment. If you're not already subscribed, subscribe to the channel. And we'll see you again. Thanks, guys. Cheers. Bye.